everyone, welcome back to my channel. Thank you so much for tuning in. This week's vlog has been long requested, but with Christmas and New Year, I never actually got around to doing it last year. But today I'm going to be talking about how to run in the dark. This is kind of from twofold point of view, obviously safety from cars and then safety from people as well. I'm constantly thinking about whether or not it's safe to go out in the dark and I get messages every week from you guys as well saying, you know, how can I keep safe? Should I be running in the dark? What should I be wearing? All of that kind of stuff. So today I'm gonna to talk about my top tips of how to run in the dark safely, and then also go through some of my favorite pieces of kit as well that are high vis or reflective so that you are not getting run over while you're out. Obviously we are past the winter solstice here in the UK. That means that the days are actually now getting longer, but there's still a big chunk of the day where you could be out running where it is still dark outside. So whether you go first thing in the morning or you go after work in the evening, it's dark. And if you don't have the privilege of being able to go out at lunchtime, chances are you'll still be doing a lot of your runs in the dark for the next few weeks at least, possibly the next few months. So without further ado, here are my top tips for running in the dark. Okay, so safety is obviously paramount when it comes to running in the dark. If you're in the countryside, it can get properly dark. If you're in a city, chances are the roads that you're running will have at least some street lights and people around and cars and etc. etc. But whichever place you're running, you need to remain safe for any sort of unsuspecting drivers or other walkers or cyclists, for example. So safety is like the first thing that you should be thinking about when you are running in the dark. And that means taking your phone, having a torch, wearing high vis, having a battery pack if you need it because obviously you can get lost when you're out running in the dark it's quite easy to get disorientated especially if you're doing longer runs and telling someone where you are and those are sort of like an overview of the things that I do if I'm going out for a longer run once it gets dark. My second piece of advice is not to wear headphones. This can be really sad if you're used to running with headphones you want kind of pumping music or a podcast to keep you company but I would not recommend running with headphones when it's dark. There are so many reasons why but you know if you are are running along and you want to cross a road, you can look but you can't actually see what's going on. You basically have lost one of your senses and it's our major sense as well. So you should be relying on your ears to figure out what's going on around you. Here in the UK, you're unlikely to be jumped out by a cougar or some other wild animal, but there's still a lot that can go wrong. And just by having your wits about you and, and not wearing headphones, you're much less likely to get into trouble just from not being able to hear what's going on around you. My third tip is to stick to well-lit areas if you can. Here in Bristol that's pretty easy. Most of the roads are well lit throughout the night and so if I need to go for a run in the evening or early morning I can probably stick to the main roads which all have street lamps on them. But when I was back in Dorset even just going out at 4 p.m. in the middle of winter would be pitch black and so I'd have to take a torch with me. In terms of safety I would say stick to the well lit areas wherever you are and so if you're in the countryside that might mean not doing a trail run in the middle of the night but rather going on a road run and that means you are a more likely to see other things coming around and be more likely to be seen by other people, other cars, cyclists, that kind of stuff and also the well areas are also likely to be more populated so if anything were to happen there would be other people around to help you. My fourth tip is to run with a friend. Obviously that's so difficult at the moment so I should probably be saying run with a housemate or someone you live with. In general when you're running in the dark it can be better to be running with someone else. That's for so many different reasons you know, if you were to injure yourself on a dark run, it can be really difficult to get help and having someone there with you can be really beneficial for that and then also for your own safety as well. There is safety in numbers, so if you can get out with someone else if you run in the evenings, then that's a really good thing to do. My next tip is to tell someone where you are going. I always do this, even if I don't know exactly where I'm going, I'll say, this is the general direction, I'm gonna make it to this park and then I'm gonna come back and I'm gonna be gone for X amount of time. And that means that if I'm gone for an extra half an hour, an extra hour and haven't said anything, they know to be slightly concerned or they should be watching out for me or whatever. So there's definitely a benefit to telling people where you're going and that means that they know that you know where you're going as well and when you're likely to be back. So they can kind of have in the back of their head what time you're supposed to be home and if you're not home at that time, should they start worrying? A way of doing this for longer runs is by having Strava Beacon and there are probably loads of other apps as well, like on WhatsApp, for example, you can share your live location and 
and Strava has a similar thing called Beacon whereby someone can keep up with where you are on your run. It's really easy to set up. You just tap the Beacon icon and you can set up a person who will get a text saying you're heading out on your run and then they can follow that run wherever you are going. I wouldn't say that this is necessarily necessary for shorter runs, but if you're going on a really long run and you're likely to be out for an hour, two hours, three hours, then they can kind of keep up with where you are. And I've also used this for races, for example, if people want to be meeting me at different checkpoints, they can keep up with where I am on my phone. And the great thing about that is that it's very specific, so I can say I want you know, my boyfriend or my dad or whoever to know where I am, but no one else. It's the same with WhatsApp as well. If you don't have Strava, just use WhatsApp. It does drain your battery. So if you are going on a long run, just, I mean, I would always say this, whether you're doing Beacon or not, but always have your battery pack on you, especially when it's cold outside, which it really is at the moment. Just have a battery pack and your charger, charging lead with you because your phone might just die. My phone died on like 30% the other day just because it was minus one degree outside. Granted, I might need a new phone, but you get the picture. Take your phone charger with you. My next tip is about road safety. Always run towards traffic and avoid roads with no pavements. I know I said to go on roads where there is lighting and sometimes, not so much here in the UK, UK, but sometimes those roads don't always have pavements but always try to find routes where there are pavements so you can stay off the road and run into traffic that is so that they are aware of you coming their way especially if you're wearing a head torch they will spot that from quite far away whereas if you're running away from them even if you're wearing high vis it's much harder for them to tell that you're a person as opposed to a bollard or something else on the side of the road run into traffic this is something that I will put my hands up and say I don't always get right but that way the cars and bikes and motorcycles are much more likely to see you. My next tip is on safety from other humans and I hate having to talk about this because it feels really icky and as someone who's done a lot of running in the dark in London in various different places I have to say I have been nervous in the past and I have been followed home as well and one thing that I do every run now especially if I'm training for something so I'm running regularly at the same time of day every day or every other day is vary my route. If you are going from home out on a run at a similar time of day every day then this is a good way to stop people being able to predict your movements and I really hate having to say this because it's kind of horrible that people would do the things that they do but it's just something that keeps you safe and not to mention varying your route is probably a good idea anyway to keep you interested and motivated and it actually helps your running as well I'm um, having a slightly different route each time and my last tip is to just follow your instincts I feel like quite often we can say oh you know it's probably fine but I did feel a bit icky. If you feel icky, if you feel like there's something wrong, just trust your instincts and go home. I have certainly been in the situation before where I have felt like someone was following me and then looked around and no one's there but I've just gone straight home because it's not worth risking anything, you know, um, being mugged or whatever. It's not worth risking that in order to get an extra couple of kilometers on your run. You can always go out the next morning. It shouldn't be a problem. Your safety should always come first when you're running and so just trust what your gut is saying. Our guts and our brains are linked. It's actually very interesting. So if you get a funny gut feeling that something is up, go home or tell someone where you are and just say, feeling a bit iffy about this, uh, just to let you know, this is where I am and I'm coming home now. I've done that on many occasions. It's been no problem for the most part, but I just feel better for knowing that someone knows where I am and that I'm heading home and not gonna be out for another hour or so. So those are my top tips for running in the dark. If you can avoid it, and if you do feel very nervous about running around your home, wherever you live, try and get out at lunchtime. And I know this isn't possible for everyone, but if you do plan your runs, then it should be possible to go out at weekends and at some lunch times to try and minimize the amount of time that you're out in the dark. For many people, you probably think, what's the problem? Running in the dark is fun and it can really be fun, but for many other people, especially women, it can be really intimidating as well. I totally understand the desire to minimize the amount of risk that you're putting yourself in. And like I said, I've never had a problem per se with running in the dark, but that doesn't mean that things don't happen. So there are lots of tips that you can do to try and reduce the risk. And then also if you can minimize the amount of time that you are heading out in the dark, then that's also another good thing to do. So now I'm gonna talk you through my favorite nighttime running gear. I wear a lot of this stuff during the day as well, but it's a lot of it's high 
life is, a lot of it's reflective as well, so if you're running through the afternoon into the evening, then you are set and prepped, ready for when it gets dark. Okay, so just to give you a small disclaimer before showing you the kit, a lot of this was gifted by Runners Need to review. Obviously, all of the opinions are entirely my own, they have not specified that I need to do this review, I just thought it might be helpful for some of you guys, and I know that Runners Need is a very popular shop with a lot of you, so if you do need some updating of your kit when it comes to staying out in the dark, go and check them out because they have a huge range specifically for running on dark mornings or uh, late at night. So the first piece of kit that I would say is entirely necessary if you're running in the dark is a torch. I did not get a torch until I was doing the Azores Tribe Run for Love. That was because one of the days was running at like 4.30 in the morning, four in the morning or something, and obviously it was pitch black for a really long time. I got a kind of relatively cheap torch, I think it cost 20 quid or so, and it did the trick, but it definitely wasn't as bright as some of the other runners' torches. And because of that, I've actually now updated the torch that I have. Both of them are from Petzl, but they're kind of a good example of lower end range and right at the top end of kind of what torches can be. So here are the two examples, as I mentioned, both from Petzl, both from Runner's Need. This one is very simple. I think it's 450 lumens, which should be enough for most runs, um, especially if you don't need to light up a huge amount of space or really far in front of you. This was absolutely fine out in the Azores, but I feel like if I hadn't had everyone else's torches around me, it would have been a little bit dark for finding my way through the undergrowth, but it's super light. You can tilt it up and down as well. And I think there's a red setting. Yeah, there you go. There's a red setting as well. So that if you are around other people, you're not blinding them with a, the, a very white, very bright light. So that's useful around camp. My second recommendation, oh, it flashes. You can get a flashy one as well, okay. Didn't know it did that, that's very fun. My second recommendation, if you need something that's much brighter and quite fancy, I would say, is this one. Also from Petzl, it has a much longer battery life, I think seven hours or something, and it's also much, much brighter. It has 750 lumens, so nearly twice as bright as the other one, and you can charge this battery pack at the back, and then this also flashes red. So you know how I was saying about running into traffic, you can kind of be running anywhere and traffic or people will be able to see you both from the front and from the back just through looking at this. So this will be flashing like rear lights on the back of a car kind of thing. And then this will be at the front as well. It has loads of different things. It can be reactive to reflections, so it can get dimmer if you're very close to things and brighter if you move further away from things. It also has flashing settings, it has a red setting, it basically does everything a head torch could do. And what I like about it as well is that it's got more support around the sides and something that I struggle with with that one is that sometimes it feels like it's going to slip off a little bit whereas this one feels extremely secure. Again it's very light, it tilts as well so you can move it to where you need it to be and essentially it does everything that you need a torch to do and more. I would say I do not necessarily need Bluetooth on my torch but this can link to an app so that you can control it from your phone rather than from this and does a whole load of stuff I haven't even figured out yet but really impressed with how bright it is my boyfriend also uses torches to go nighttime fossiling which is quite a different use of a torch but he says that his very very bright torches around a similar amount of lumens don't last anywhere near the same amount of time as this maybe half the amount of time so this is very handy for very long runs and doesn't take too long to charge as well how do I look <laughs> so with other nighttime running kit you can kind of choose between high vis and reflective most kit has a combination of the two if it is specifically for running in the dark i bought this from ron hill and it comes with some matching gloves these are essentially like basic basic night running kit it doesn't have very much reflective on it. That's the kind of the reflective bit. And it doesn't have touchscreen compatibility in the gloves, which can be quite annoying if you want to be using your phone whilst you're on the run. And I would say this hat, although it is unisex, is more designed for men because when you have your hair in a ponytail, it just kind of sits in the middle of the hat and just feels a little bit uncomfortable. But having said that, it keeps my head warm, keeps my ears warm, which is like the most important thing. And these are really nice and warm for the hands without being too bulky and thick. So although they're not high tech, 
tech kind of in any way at all. They're extremely affordable. I think it cost me 16 pounds for both the hat and the gloves, whereas usually you might struggle to find a pair of gloves for that amount. It does the job. As you can see, I'm extremely high vis. So these are both from Ron Hill and I would recommend them if you're looking for something a little bit more affordable. On the other end of the kind of high vis reflective spectrum is this also from Ron Hill via Runner's Need. It is an ear warmer or headband. It's a headband. I wear this all the time. I have two of these. This one's my reflective one and then I've got a non-reflective one as well that's a little bit warmer. I adore these. I think they do the job so well. These are kind of more for women than men but you can get that, I mean, they're all essentially unisex, it doesn't really matter. The benefit of this is that your ponytail can stick out the top and that it doesn't get dampened down like it does with the kind of beanie. And this is all reflective, so obviously it's not high vis, but it uh, reflects light when it is shone on it. And I think it looks quite nice as well. I wear it in, I mean, for most of my runs, it's not specifically for nighttime running. Very impressed, so that's why runners need, and it's not too expensive as well. Okay, so two much smaller things that are great for updating your kit if you don't wanna be buying new kit necessarily, but want to be running in the dark. These are stick-on reflective strips. So if you have a specific kit that you really enjoy wearing, but it's not reflective or not high-vis, you can get some of these. Again, I got these um, from runners need. Stick them on to any of the kit that you currently own. I got a picture of a young boy there with reflective literally everywhere and that's a great idea if you don't want to be spending a huge amount of money on getting a jacket or you know whatever hat and gloves because you've already got enough pairs so I would say grab some of these they are removable so they're not gonna like stay on your clothes forever but very handy if you have a lot of nighttime running to do over one particular year or if you're training for a marathon or whatever it is yeah grab yourself some of these these are 10 pounds not too expensive this other one I would say may be less suitable for wintertime running because it's reflective skin spread and that means you can put it anywhere on your skin and it reflects light. This was used by a lot of people during the Azores Tribe Run for Love. Although there weren't any cars obviously out there, it was quite fun seeing other people when you shone your torch on them. And the only issue with it is that obviously it's meant for your skin and not for your clothes. In winter, there's not gonna be a huge amount of skin showing. So maybe save this for your hotter nighttime runs. So whether that's training in the night in the summer or doing a particular race that starts really early or ends quite late, this can be quite a fun little thing. I don't think it costs a huge amount as well and probably lasts quite a long time as well. I have not myself tried some of this, but I have seen a lot of other people doing it. I think it's kind of as much a novelty item as particularly useful, but I'd love to hear if you have used this stuff for any races or training and what you think if you have. So my last recommendation, but by no means least, is a good reflective jacket. This one is the Odlo Zero Weight Pro Warm Reflective Jacket, I think. I think that's the name. I tried to remember it. It is the best reflective jacket I have ever worn but I have to say that is reflected in the price. It is sold at full prices at £165 but currently reduced I think to £135. Again this one was from Runner's Need but I have to say I was much more impressed with this than my previous high-vis jacket which was from Brooks which I found entirely unbreathable, very sweaty when I wore it out for a run. I wore this out the other day and granted it was like minus one degree but I didn't overheat in it. I was wearing a lot of layers underneath and I didn't sweat loads so I think that's one of the most important things. And I mentioned this in my winter running kit suggestions that I posted two weeks ago. So go and check that out if you want to see my other running jacket reviews. And I said, I promised in that video that I would give this a go whilst out on a run. And I have done just that. And I'm far more impressed with this than I have been with my other reflective jackets that I've tried in the past where it feels like they're putting reflectivity and high vis before actual performance. And I feel like there's no point having a really high vis jacket if you cannot run in it or if it's super uncomfortable to run in. I'm really, really impressed with this. It's quite smart as well. They do this men and women sizes and shapes. This is the extra small, but it is quite tight. I would say, I mean, I was wearing like a base layer and two jumpers underneath. So that's probably the reason it was quite tight, but I would say it's true to size, but quite form fitting. Not sure about the men's ones. I'm sure that's a little bit looser. And the plus side, it has pockets and the pockets when they zip up they don't flap around and that's something that I've struggled with in the past if I don't want to run with the bag and I just want to put my phone in my pocket or my headphone case or whatever else quite often they'll be quite flappy and I found with this because it's quite form-fitting they don't flap at all and that's a massive positive for me I mean it just seems to be really well designed and quite impressed with how it's performed so far it has thumb holes as well 
keep your fingers and uh, your wrists very warm. It's also got mesh there, which means that it is much more breathable, as I mentioned, than a lot of other jackets. Obviously, there are other options available. There are loads of high-vis jackets out there, especially at the moment. And I would say try and get like something that's a little bit windproof and waterproof as well, so that you're not having to put some other layers on top, which obviously totally negates the fact that it is high-vis. But yes, I would say that's one of the most important pieces of kit for your winter and dark running wardrobe, something that is lightweight, but very high vis so that people can see you when you are out on the run. That's it for my kit recommendations and actually for this vlog in its entirety. I hope you enjoyed it, I hope you found it useful. I'd love to hear if you have any suggestions for safety whilst running in the dark, especially from women, because I know it can be super daunting to be out there running by yourself in the dark. Ooh runner that's fun i love it when i see runners going around the road here <laughs> anyway also i'd love to hear any suggestions you have for kit that you love when you're running in the dark whether that is in the winter or in the summer if you have any suggestions or any opinions on any of the kit here place them in the comments down below don't forget to click the thumbs up if you did enjoy this and hit the subscribe button there'll be a new running vlog every single week and lots more updates on the house as well which i have just moved into it's very exciting and thank you again for watching and i will see you next time bye